Hey Grade Sixes, we're going to be talking about prime and composite numbers. What on earth are they? Well, just before we get into that, let's talk about something else that we've already sort of discussed earlier in the year. First of all, what is a multiple? What do we say when you've got a multiple? Well, a multiple is a number that can be divided by another number without a remainder. So for example, we look at 15 and 20 are multiples of 5. Can you think of any other multiples of 5? Sure, you got it. 10, uh, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. These are all multiples of 5. When you look at that word multiple, you should think multiply. And they all look, they both look very, very similar. So if we're asking for a multiple, it means you need to multiply. So what is a factor? Well, that word also looks like something else. It looks like fraction. And factor and fraction means that a factor of something is something that is smaller, a component of it, a fraction of it. And we can define it by saying that factors are numbers you can multiply together to get another number. So for example, 1 times 6 equals 6. Uh, 2 times 3 equals 6. So 1, 2, 3, and 6 are all factors of 6. It means that they go into 6 very evenly. So now that we know what a multiple is and what a factor is, let's think a minute about some numbers. I'm going to give you a, a question here. This is a chart where the numbers are going to be either prime or not prime. And I want you to take a few minutes and I want you to think about what makes the left side prime. So the number 2 is a prime number. The number 3 and the number 5 are prime numbers. What do they have in common? I want you to think about that. Hmm. On the other hand, number 1, 8, and 9 are not prime at all. So what do they have in common? Let's look at a couple more. 7 and 11 are both prime numbers. So taking a look at all these prime numbers, what do they have in common? Please stop the tape and think about it for a few minutes and try to figure out what you think the rule is. On the other side, 10, 12, and 14 are not prime. Let's look at a couple more. 13, 17, and 19 are all prime numbers. 15, 16, and 18 are not prime numbers. And last but not least, 23, 29, and 31 are all prime. 20, 21, and 24 are not prime. So I want you to think about it. Stop the video and think about what makes the left side prime and what makes it not prime. Have you stopped it yet? I hope so. Okay, now that you've turned it back on and you've got an answer, let's talk about what it is. A prime number has only two factors. Remember what a factor was? We looked at that a few minutes ago. A factor is a number that you can multiply together to get another number. So factors of 6 are 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. So the factors, there's four of them. So that's what a factor is. So a prime number only has two factors. It can't have more and it can't have less. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. 3. The factors are 1 and 3. 1 times 3. You can't get 3 any other way. So that is indeed a prime number. What about 5? 1 times 5. There's no other two numbers you can multiply to get 5. So that is a prime number. What about 6? Oh, hold on a second. 1 times 6, 2 times 3. That's more. That shouldn't be in there. Get rid of that one. 23. 1 times 23. There's no other way to get it. So yes, indeed, 23 is a prime number. So what is a composite number? Well, a composite number is a number that has more than two factors. So any number that has more than two factors equals a composite number. Let's take a look at a few. 2. You have 1 times 2. Is that a composite number? No. Why is that in there? It is not a composite number because it only has 2. So what is it called? I hope you got it. A prime number. Yes. What about 4? 
you can do 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So it has 3 factors. Is that more than 2? Yes, it is. So 4 is a composite number. 6 is a composite number because it has more than 2. 7? Well, 1 times 7. Is there any other way you can make it? No, it can't be in there. We'll get rid of that one. What about 8? 1 times 8, 2 times 4, that's more than 2. So it is a composite number. And last but not least, what about 9? 1 times 9 and 3 times 3, that gives it a total of 3 factors, which is more than 2, and that was our definition. So a composite number has more than 2 factors. A prime number has only 2 factors. So let's see how we do here when putting this together. So we've got our Venn diagram here, and we're going to separate these numbers. I want you to stop the video, and I want you to see where you would put each of these numbers on this Venn diagram. It's either going to be prime, composite, or it's going to be neither prime nor composite. So let's see how we do. You stopped it? Good. OK, 7. What did you come up with? Oh, I see a hand in the back there. Yes, 7 is a prime number, because all you can get is 1 times 7. What about 9? Oh, yes, you at the front. OK, 9 is a composite, because 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. What about 29? Yes, you in the middle. Prime is right. 8, composite. 3, prime. 6, composite. 4, composite. Oh, 15. Oh, it's an odd number. Yes, it's composite, because 3 times 5 and 1 times 15. What about 1? Where did you put 1? Well, does it have two factors? Nope. Does it have more than two factors? Nope. It is neither prime nor composite, so it stays out here. It's an oddball all by itself. And what about 2? Well, 1 times 2 equals uh, 2, so it is a prime number. But in fact, 2 is the only even number that is prime. Every other prime number is always going to be odd, but 2 is the only even prime number. Hope you did well on there. Let's talk about something else. The sieve of Aristotelian. Oh, that's easy to say. Well, what is that? Well, Aristosthenes was a famous mathematician, and he created the sieve. Well, what's a sieve? Well, you might have seen one of these around your mum's kitchen or something. And what does she use it for? Maybe she uses it to sift tea grounds or coffee grounds or something else. Or maybe you've got some fine noodles that you put in. So a sieve separates things out. Well, the sieve of Aristosthenes basically was meant to sift out composite numbers. So all that you're left with are the prime numbers. So let's see how it works. So if we take a look at this this chart here, what Aristotelian said was if you take all the multiples of 2 and you click them and it basically goes those are all the even numbers uh, are all taken out because we know that an even number cannot be prime other than 2 itself. So then let's take the multiples of 3. So we'll click 3, and there are all the multiples of 3. Now they're eliminated. Let's take get rid of the multiples of 5. And when we get all the multiples of 5, they're all gone. The multiples of 7, we get rid of those. The multiples of 11, notice the pattern there. Multiples of 13, not very many, but there are a few. Multiples of 17. And lastly, the multiples of 19. And if you take all those multiples, what you're doing is you will find all of the prime numbers up to 400. And even if you did it up to 7, that would get rid of all the, the composite numbers up to 100. And uh, this is what this is the sieve that Aristotelian's invented in order to find the prime numbers. So how are you So how are you ever going to use prime numbers? Well, prime numbers are actually the building block of all whole numbers. 
and it's really important to know them and how you can know them is through factor trees and you know what a, what a factor is so it remember it reminds you of fractions so it's smaller than but if you take the six and you say okay what are the factors of six we're gonna break it down to the prime factors well basically two times three and since they're both prime that's as low as we can go but let's take a slightly bigger number and see how that goes if we take the number 12 and we break it down to its factors you would get 3 times 4 and 3 is a prime number already so we put it down directly below and then we take the 4 and we break it into its prime number so you've got 2 times 2 so what you're left with is 3 times 2 times 2 gives you what? it gives you 12 that's right so Every, the, every whole number can be broken down into prime factors. But the neat thing is that there's more than one way to do a prime factor. So let's take 12, but this time we'll break it down to 2 times 6. Well, the 2 is already a prime number, so we just put it straight below. But 6 can be divided into 2 times 3. And look what you end up with. 3 times 2 times 2 2 times 2 times 3. Even though we did totally different numbers in the middle, we end up with the same prime factors at the end. Well, does that work with bigger numbers? Let's try it with something like 56. Well, 56 can be broken down to 7 times 8. What would the next two numbers be in this factor tree? Think about it. Okay. Well, 7 is already a prime number, so it just goes straight down. 8 can be broken down into 2 times 4. Now you've got 7 and 2, which are both prime numbers, but 4 is not, so you've got to keep going and put it down to 2. So we can say that 56 can be broken down to the prime factors of 7, 2, 2, 2. And if you multiply those, 7 times 2 is 14, 14 times 2 is 28, 28 times 2 is 56. So you can see how that works. But again, that's not the only way you can do it. Let's try another way. How about we take that 56 and we go 2 times 28? Well, if you do that, you end up with 2 is already a prime number. I want you to keep them going down because then you end up with a straight line. And whenever you do tree factors, that's important to have those down there. Then you got 28. Well, 28 can be broken down to 2 times 14. Now it could have been broken down to something else. Can you think of something else that would be, how about 4 times 7? 4 times 7 is another way we could have broken it down. But let's see what we end up with this. So 28, we'll divide it by 2, we get 2 times 14. 14 is not a prime number, so you break it down to 7. And once again, you can see that we end up with the same prime numbers at the end of our tree, but just in a different order. But it's the same answer. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. What about an even bigger number, like 72? Can you think of two numbers when multiplied together give you 72? Well, how about 8 and 9? 8 and 9, neither one of those are prime numbers. They're both composite, so we have to keep going lower. So what would you break those down to? Think about it. 2 times 4 and 3 times 3. Are they all prime numbers? No, the 4 isn't. So we have to go down one more step. The others are just dropped straight down. So you end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 and that will give you 72. Let's check it out. Our 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3? Come on. 24. And 24 times 3 equals 72. So you do get that in the end. So prime and composite numbers. I hope that you can distinguish between the two and you're going to enjoy the activities that we do with them. Enjoy.